Hey guys, welcome to another video and today I'm in Stranded Deep and I'm going to be doing another one of my tips videos. Now there's lots of these on my channel covering all kinds of survival games so don't forget to sub if you haven't already. But today it's 20 pro tips in Stranded Deep. Number one, the yucca plant is one of the few plants that regenerates in game. So whenever I see that it grows back I cut it down so it can start the cycle again. In that way you have a good supply of fibrous leaves you can then use to make lashing. Just keep recycling them and then that also includes the little plants that grow and sprout around in the grass on these trees such as this one here. So you can cut down those young palm trees. Keeps you supplied in lashing. Tip 3 when you're building the plank station, it requires the refined axe you can see here embedded in the model that appears once it's built. Now, this refined axe actually needs leather to be constructed, so it makes them quite difficult to maintain or make full stop. So, what I suggest is when you're making a plank station, make sure you've used your refined axe to the point where its durability which is shown in your inventory if you shift the arrow there shows the durability at the bottom is is low use it to its capacity and then when you build the plank station you're not wasting a whole bunch of use with your refined axe which does a much better job than the crude axe which is the one you will probably end up using most of the time tip four if you establish yourself on an island, a small island, one really handy thing about it is you can strip back all the trees and then when you build on it, although sometimes the rendering in the game is a little bit staggered, you can see your stripped down island from afar. What this means is you can actually locate your base, which is that island you stripped back, much more easily than if you pick one of the bigger islands. Now obviously there are other ways of doing this, you can use a compass and other ways of navigation. But if you're stuck and you're looking back at your island, what you'll notice is these stripped back islands are probably the easiest thing to spot when you're being buffeted by a storm or such like that. So I always strip back an island so that then I can spot it from a distance. And you really can spot these from a distance, these islands. Tip 5. One of the rare resources in game is clay. You need it to make bricks and then to make the brick structures or the furnace. There's, there, there are a few uses for it. And it's kind of like more of an end game resource because you tend to make wooden structures to begin with. But as you will see in my base, they, they look really cool, these brick structures. So how do you find them? Well, reserve it for daytime. You can't really find them at night because the water gets so dark. And then wait for a nice bright day get your boat and swim around and you're looking for this formation okay this here and then you can take your pick and give it a good whack and out of each of these you should get six clay pieces now there is a problem the sharks do come it takes a while to mine it not too long but in that time there's a good chance you will get a shark come out. This one's actually quite deep. Usually they're a bit further up near the beach and that allows you to sort of back off a little bit. And these bits of clay when you mine them, they do spring out. So keep an eye on them as you mine them. So that's the clay. Definitely worth gathering. Really nice end game type structure you can have in your base. Tip 6. Placing structures can be a little bit tricky obstacles get in the way and prevent you from building in those locations you can see here I've had to build around some of these rocks but something that caught me out and something I would recommend just checking is when you build a structure and you build your foundations put the arch in first and then see if you can put a door in now you can see here on this build that I couldn't actually put the door in at this location and it doesn't seem to be any reason for it but I, I cannot put a door in there. What you need to do is just double check. You don't even have to build it. If, if when you hold the template of the door up to the archway, it goes blue, you know you can build it there. So I would check that. If you're serious about building something like a brick structure like this, double check whether the door goes into the archway before you build anything else. Tip seven. 
A good source of light is the furnace, as you can see here. Obviously, if you can get lamps or lanterns, they're really cool. But the furnace, once you've made it, does provide free light. You don't have to fuel it or anything like that. It just burns away all the time like this, giving you this nice orange glow. And you can place it into your campsite, and you don't have to find any lanterns. And if you don't find any lanterns, then you've got your furnace. So very handy free light source. Tip eight. So key to getting around quickly is having the boat motor. Now this obviously needs a range of parts. If we go to crafting here, you've got rafts, propulsion, and we have a whole bunch. We've got the fuel tank, the propeller, the carburetor, the engine, the duct tape, lashing, wood. So it's quite a bit to collect. But once you've got around and you start to collect, gather everything you can, you should better put it together. And it's so vital to having success because the longer you take to get from one place to another, the more food you need, the more water you need, and it just doesn't, things don't get going as quickly. So I always prioritize getting a motorboat together so we can get around quickly. Talking about motorboats, tip nine. I always create myself a little harbour. Now, that's because I like to have a spot away from the beach where I can lock in my craft, whether it's a sail propelled craft or the dinghy or the motorboat. I like to have a point where I can slot it in. And the reason why this is, is because sometimes I've come back to my boat and for some reason, it's been beached. It gets stuck up on this edge here, around here somewhere. And it's very frustrating, especially if you can't shift it off or it gets flung in the air and ends up further on the beach when you try and push it. Tip 10, I try and prioritize my jobs depending on what time of day it is. Now, if it's night, I will go out and I will gather wood or logs or stone, although stone can be quite difficult sometimes. The easiest thing to do is cut down trees, and you do need a lot of trees if you want to build a big base. But I definitely don't do any work in the sea at night. The sharks seem to come out more regularly from the darkness, although they're pretty common during the day now as well. And you can't really see underwater. So I get out and I try and gather as much wood as I can and get that back to the base. Incidentally, before we move on to tip 11, I just wanted to let you know that you can see a tour of this new base that I've built in Stranded Deep on my second YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. Tip 11. Currently, I don't really bother with farms very much. I put these in here to experiment a bit. But when they've regrown, the plants aren't there. They don't appear. You can put the original seed in and it will grow the plant. That's fine. And that may be gathering the fruit and then placing it into the farm using the hoe. But you don't get much return. And to be honest, I've got this far on 30 days by just eating coconuts. So. I tend to avoid any efforts with the farms and just use the stuff that I find, like the aloe vera, to make medical supplies or just eat on the spot. So this, I think, will change. It'd be nice to have more in each plot. Tip 12. Now, you may have just come off a rough sea. You may have fallen over, been bitten by a shark. You're panicking. Which box did I put the bandages in? Well, the way I get around this is I have a medical bay, medical hut, whatever you want to call it. And in there, I put crates with medical supplies. So it's quick and easy. I know where to run to to get the antibiotics if I'm poisoned, to make some bandages. It's all in this one location. Tip 13. Now, if you get your hands on one of the torches, you can see here in the back here the torch it's invincible 
handy thing you can do is at night, if you turn it on and then go to your boat, if you then start your boat up, the light remains. So wherever you look, you're going to be able to see a lot more clearly and it allows you to see down into the water as well, which is really handy. Tip 14. If you head out to do some shark hunting, you need to stick with it. If you find a shark, attack it, throw a few spears at it. If you then go away and leave it, it may go off or the damage that you've done will go. Now, the reason why I say this is because whenever I've ended up hunting sharks, they get to a point where they, they, they run off because you do them too much damage and then you never see them again. So basically you have to try and stay with that shark if you're hunting them. If you let them get away, then the damage that you've done to them will ultimately go or you end up fighting another shark, another type of shark. Because there are a number of different types of shark in the game. Tip 15. To make bricks, you obviously need clay, which you gather in the water, as I've shown you in a previous tip. But you also need to build the furnace. You need clay to do that. And you also need to build the brick station. Now, they need to be close to each other, so it triggers the ability to craft the bricks from the clay. So tip 16. Now, as it gets darker, you need a light source. We talked about the furnace already. Well, the lanterns that you gather around the map, if you drop those on the floor, they will automatically come on, provide you light, they act as beacons, and they look pretty damn cool. Tip 17. What type of weapon are you going to use in game? So there are a range of them. You can use the bow or the spear gun. You need a canister, a gas air tank to make the spear gun, and then more resources to make the bolts, if you like, or the arrows, and there's also a bow, now, I kind of used the bow and the spear gun for quite a while, and spear gun's faster, more accurate, and easier to hunt with, but it costs more. The crude spear, I find, has been pretty amazing. I mean, I use it uh, to repel sharks, and it only costs one stick to make, so I might head out, go to an island, craft up some spears if I'm, say, digging some... Uh, clay from around the sides of an island and just throw some spears if I get a get any shark action and it doesn't take up any slots I don't want to have to bring the gun back I can carry more home if I need to so I at the moment would advise using the spear as a throwing weapon you can hold the right mouse button and then press the left mouse button to throw it and you can actually throw them really far as well but you do have to look out for the trajectory there is a bit of an arch to it, so you need to practice. But you can pick them up again, and they're bigger, so you can spot where they've landed if you do miss, which is another bonus. So I tend to go with the spears. Tip 18. Now, water supply is crucial. You can survive on coconut milk for a while, but you soon start to run out, especially when you need to sleep. So you need to get your hands on a leather water skin. Now, the way you make these is you gather some leather, which is actually quite difficult to come by. You've either got to hunt a boar or find some in a wreck, which does happen, and then take it to the tanning rack. Now, the tanning rack itself does need leather, two hides, two raw hides, which you obviously get from the boar, to make, and that, which it then allows you to make the leather if you hold C, while you're actually holding the hide and then you can make the leather and, and so on but you can then craft the leather water skin now this you can refill so if you pick it up you can drink from it it holds three three drinks and then you need your solar still so the solar still itself needs the tarp and some wood and some stone and then you can build that and that will eventually fill up and you can fill up the water skin by holding down E. Tip 19. Now, I sleep every other day in game. 
you obviously need a shelter for this and you click the sleep and it takes you through now the reason is on your little dial here your sleep counter if you hold down F and press the left mouse button your sleep counter on the right here shows the number of bars I only really sleep when it gets down to maybe three two maybe even one and I try and coincide it with the night so that I've got more days to work in I think ultimately you can do more during the day you can see into the ocean more clearly and so that's that's how I work my sleep cycle final tip tip 20 concerns boats it's really kind of like a doubler if you like one good thing to do is to put crates on your boat it means you can obviously carry more back from islands when you go out on your gathering missions but I would say you have to be a bit careful if the sea stays calm then you're okay but if you get a big storm these can fall off and the the kind of the physics of this game are still a little bit unpredictable sometimes so you have to look out for that if it falls into deep sea you won't get it back and I rarely build my rafts bigger than three berth and that's because I find the bigger they get the slower they are the harder they are to turn and it just becomes a pain in the ass you don't travel as quickly I find guys so I hope you found these tips useful if you did click the thumbs up if you've got any comments or any of your own pro tips put them down below maybe I'll make a follow-up video and give your name and mention I really enjoy playing this game I mean you can see in what I've done here it's a big structure the tour for this base incidentally is in the link down below on my second YouTube channel guys thanks for watching and I will catch up with you very soon